All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay. The headlines: President Draupadi Murmu to begin three-day visit to Assam this afternoon. President Draupadi Murmu presents 55 Padma Awards at an investiture ceremony. Scientist Dr. Dilip Mahalanavis, music composer M M Kiravani, and mathematician Sujata Ramadurai amongst the awardees. State said for the second G20 Development Working Group meeting in Kottayam, Kerala. RBI to announce monetary policy committee decisions today. India elected to three UN commissions as member, and in IPL cricket, Punjab Kings beat Rajasthan Royals by five runs at the Barsapara Cricket Stadium in Guwahati. President Draupadi Murmu will begin a three-day visit of Assam this afternoon. Ms. Murmu will inaugurate the Gaj Utsav at Kaziranga and attend the Platinum Jubilee celebration of the Guwahati High Court, among other events. A Guwahati correspondent reports that on a maiden visit to the Kaziranga National Park, President Draupadi Murmu will inaugurate the Gaj Utsav, which celebrates 30 years of elephant conservation in India. She will also grace the Platinum Jubilee celebration of the Guwahati High Court in Guwahati. The president will end a visit at Tejpur, where she will conduct sortie on Sukhoi 30 aircraft. A report. In her maiden visit to the Kaziranga National Park, President Draupadi Murmu will conduct jeep safari to know the conservation activities of the park authority. The president will inaugurate the exhibition on elephant conservation in the country at Bagori Ranch and also attend a cultural event. Tomorrow, Mrs. Murmu will inaugurate the Gaj Utsav 2023. This event is being organized to celebrate the 30 years of elephant conservation in India. She will also grace the platinum jubilee celebration of the Go. Guwahati High Court in Guwahati tomorrow. On Saturday, President will visit Tejpur and conduct sortie on Sukhoi 30 aircraft before wrapping up her visit. Manas Patim Sharma, AR News, Kaziranga. President Draupadi Murmu conferred 55 Padma Awards for the year 2023 at the second civil investiture, investiture ceremony at Rashtrapati Bhavan last evening. She presented three Padma Bhushan, five Padma Bhushan, and 47 Padma Shri Awards. Padma Bhushan was given to ORS pioneer Dr. Dilip Mahalanabis and former Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Mulayam Singh Yadav posthumously. The President awarded the Padma Bhushan to philanthropist Sudha Murthy, theoretical physicist Professor Deepak Dhar, Canada author Dr. S. L. Bhairappa, and spiritual leader Tri Dandi Chinna G. R. Swamiji. Legendary singer Vani Jairam was given the Padma Bhushan posthumously. President Munbu also conferred Padma Shri awards on music composer M M Kiravani, water conservationist Uma Shankar Pandey, mathematician Sujata Ramadurai, educator Anand Kumar and actress Ravina Tandon among others. Social worker Gajanan Jagannath Mane who has devoted his life to the rehabilitation of leprosy affected people and Ajay Kumar Mandavi who is actively involved in rehabilitating former Maoists through wood carving art were also given Padma Shri. The Minister of Home Affairs has issued an advisory to all states in view of Hanuman Jayanti today. It has asked all state governments to ensure maintenance of law and order, peaceful observance of the festival and monitoring of any factors that could disturb communal harmony in society. The advisory comes in view of recent incidents of clashes in West Bengal and Bihar during Ram Navami celebrations. Incidents of violence, arson and stone pelting were reported in these two states. The Supreme Court has refused to entertain a petition filed by 14 political parties alleging that central investigating agencies have been misused by the center. A division bench comprising Chief Justice D Y Chandrachur and Justice J B Pardiwala said that it cannot issue general directions without a factual context. The Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha were adjourned for the day yesterday. Both houses of Parliament saw continued protest over the Adani Group issue. and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi's democracy remarks on the 14th consecutive day of the second leg of the budget session Governor of the Reserve Bank of India Shaktikant Das will announce decisions taken by the Monetary Policy Committee meeting today at 10 a.m. The bi-monthly review meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee began on Monday In the past year RBI has increased the repo rate by 2.5% Supply side disruption due to the Russia Ukraine war 
rate hikes by US Federal Reserve and rising inflation were cited as reasons behind the rate hike. It had made EMIs and home loans more expensive. The four-day development working group meeting under India's G20 presidency all set to begin in Kumarakam in Kerala. This is the second development working group meet after the first one held in Mumbai in December last year. The formal development working group meeting which opens tomorrow will be preceded by a side event today with discussions on data for development, lifestyle for environment and just green transitions. Several experts and speakers from international organizations, academia, think tanks and civil society will take part in the discussions at the side event, setting the tone for the development working group meeting tomorrow. Over 80 delegates from G20 member nations, nine invitee countries and various international and regional organizations will participate in the event. This is All India Radio giving you the news for quick news updates around the clock. Follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. India has been elected as a member of the UN Statistical Commission, the Commission on Narcotic Drugs and the Program Coordinating Board of the Joint UN Program on HIV AIDS, UN AIDS by the Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC of the United Nations. These are important subsidiary bodies of the ECOSOC. The Statistical Commission is the highest body dealing with international statistical activities and is responsible for standard setting in the field of statistics. India was a member of the Statistical Commission last in 2004 and it is returning to the Commission after a gap of two decades. In a tweet, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar congratulated the team of permanent mission of India to the United Nations, New York, for coming through so strongly in a competitive election. The Commission on Narcotic Drugs supervises the application of international drug control treaties, while the Program Coordinating Board of UN AIDS supports and provides strategic direction for an international response to HIV AIDS. The permanent mission of India to the United Nations in New York said, India will strive to make its due contributions in these and other organs in the spirit of advancing multilateral solutions to global challenges. The Information and Broadcasting Ministry and Amazon India have signed an agreement in New Delhi to boost India's creative economy and promote creative talent. As part of the agreement, Amazon Prime India Video will sponsor scholarships, create internship programs and offer jobs for students of the Film and Television Institute of India, FTII and Satyajit Ray Film and Television Institute. The International Film Festival of India, IFFI, award-winning films and films produced as part of India's international co-production treaties and the rich archival content of Prasad Bharti and the National Film Development Corporation will also be provided a platform on Amazon Prime Video and Mini TV. Speaking on the occasion yesterday, Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur said the Indian media and entertainment industry is growing rapidly and is a key contributor to India's creative economy. OTT platforms have the responsibility of ensuring that their platform does not propagate vulgarity and abuse camouflage as creative expressions. Creativity ke naam pe hum kuch bhi OTT par nahi paros sakte. Ye bhi hum ensure karna ki ugi abhi to platforms bade hone shuru huye. Kurodo log isse aur jodne wale hain. So I think this is the time that industry where we have self-regulation. We should also look at these details because India is a diverse country and OTT must also reflect the collective conscience of the country. The Bharatiya Janta Party will celebrate its 43rd Foundation Day today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address party workers at 9.45 a.m. Briefing the media New Delhi Party's National General Secretary Tarun Chuk said, BGP has decided to celebrate a special week from its Foundation Day till the 14th of April, which is the birth anniversary of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Mr. Chuk added that the 11th of April is the birth centenary of Mahatma Jyoti Bhav Phule and on this occasion various programs will be organized by the party at several places. French President Emmanuel Macron and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen arrived in Beijing yesterday for a three-day state visit in a bid to dissuade China from supporting Russia in the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict. The visit comes amid deteriorating EU-China relations due to widening rifts over the Ukraine crisis. The visit also comes as relations between the US and China soured after the US shot down a Chinese surveillance balloon in February. 
Hours before his arrival in Beijing yesterday, Mr. Macron had a phone conversation with Mr. Biden during which they agreed to engage China to try to hasten the end of the conflict in Ukraine. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Spanish PM Pedro Sanchez have also visited Beijing in recent months. All India Radio is presenting a vignette of select quotes of the Prime Minister from Man Ki Baat as the program completes its 100th episode in April this year. In this 42nd episode, let's listen to the excerpts of Man Ki Baat in which the Prime Minister spoke about the message for humanity by Guru Nanak Dev Ji. People, voice and direct dialogue. That's your and our Man Ki Baat. Yes. This is how our Prime Minister connects with millions of countrymen. With the program Man Ki Baat, aired on the last Sunday of every month on All India Radio. This series, which started on October 3rd, 2014, will complete its 100th episode in April 2023. In the 45th episode of this special program, let's listen to those excerpts in which the Prime Minister spoke of the message delivered to humanity by Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Many a great men have been born on this fertile land of India. Those who regard all humans as equal, who gave the universal message of compassion and love. The first Sikh Guru, Nanak Dev Ji, was one such who not only treated humans as one, but all creations of God as equal and called out to the people to practice kindness towards humanity. In the Man Ki Baat program, Broadcast on 24th June 2018, the Prime Minister recalled the teachings of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, which are relevant even today. Guru Govind Dohu Khade Kaake Lagu Paaye Balihari Guru Haapne Govind Diyo Bataaye Aisi hoti hai ye Guru ki mahanta Aur aise hi ye Guru hai Jagat Guru, Guru Nanak Dev Jinhone koti koti logon ko Sanmarg dikhaya Sadiyon se prerna dete rahe गुरु नानक देव ने समाज में जातिगत भेदभाव को खत्म करने और पूरे मानव जाति को एक मानते हुए उन्हें गले लगाने की शिक्षा दी गुरु नानक देव कहते थे गरीबों और जरूरतमंदों की सेवा ही भगवान की सेवा है In IPL cricket Punjab Kings beat Rajasthan Royals by 5 runs at the Barsapara Cricket Stadium in Guwahati last night chasing a victory target of 198 runs Rajasthan Royals scored 192 for the loss of 7 wickets in the stipulated 20 overs Today Kolkata Knight Riders will face Royal Challengers Bangalore at the Eden Gardens in Kolkata the match will start at 7:30 p.m. In European football, Real Madrid beat arch rivals Barcelona 4-0 to reach the Copa del Rey final, riding on a Karim Benzema hat-trick. This is the first time since January 1995 that Real Madrid defeated Barcelona by four-goal margin. And now, for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Ramya. Thank you, Abhishek. China at it again. U.S. slams its bid to lay claim to Arunachal, writes the pioneer. Arunachal is an integral part of India. U.S. asserts its stance again, says the Hindustan Times. On its foundation day today, BJP all set to launch election campaign for 2024 informs the Tribune. PM Modi hails contribution of Stand Up India in empowering deprived sections reports the statesman. And finally, Slum Soccer, a project based in Chennai with a mission of using soccer to tackle the root causes of homelessness in the country, has been shortlisted for an award at the 2023 Laureus World Sports Awards reports the statesman. And with that, it's back to you, Abhishek. Thank you, Ramya. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. President Draupadi Murmu to begin three-day visit of Assam this afternoon. President Draupadi Murmu presents 55 Padma Awards at an investiture ceremony. Scientist Dr. Dilip Mahalanabis, music composer M. M. Kiravani, and mathematician Sujata Ramadorai amongst the awardees. State said for the second G20 Development Working Group meeting in Kottayam, Kerala. RBI to announce Monetary Policy Committee decisions today. India elected to three UN commissions as member. And in IPL cricket, Punjab Kings beat Rajasthan Royals by five runs at the Barsapara Cricket Stadium in Guwahati. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.